Good morning. Welcome back. It's uh, it's a Monday morning. We've got a lot going on this week, and we've got a lot to do. So I don't know how much of it's going to make a great video, but we've got a lot going on. Uh, starting off this morning, we're going to hook this tractor back up to our planter because that wing has settled, and I don't like it, and so we need to hook it up, mostly just the hydraulics, and try and raise it, and we'll put some cylinder stops in if we can get that done. Um, but I want to do that because we've got a lot of work to do to this corn planter. Hoping Brock's going to be here this week that he can start working on some of that. Okay, I got our required hoses hooked up. Start this up. See what happens when we try and lift it up. Hopefully it just picks that wing up. Oh, there it is. It starts to go. Well, moved a little bit. I we'll have to wait for our computer to get booted up so we can put it in the right mode. And we have a software update. Come on. Okay. Menu, menu, come on. Seed star. It's slow today. What is going on? MMC, what is that? Following issue sensors. Yes, I know. It's because it's unplugged. Frame control. Okay. Go to plants. Now we should be able to lift it. Slowly. That's not ideal. Oh, I don't like this at all. We're getting our center all off level. Alright, I gotta go move some stuff and we'll get there, but it's now we're all cockeyed. So I found three of the four cylinder stops that I needed, which should allow me to get this level. Or at least up. Dang it, come on. Still not what I wanted. We appear to be missing one of the cylinder stops. We never got. Anyway, there's Brock. We should get this. Just trying to rephase everything. Basically setting it all the way down and all the way up, but I've got the cylinder stops in so it doesn't actually go on the ground except for this one wing. Yeah, it's still getting out of phase. Okay, we're just going to leave it there. Good enough. That's what we need. Okay, well, we got this wing up off the ground, so that's good. Good morning, Brock. Good morning. How are you today? You look grumpy. What's wrong? Good. Okay. Um, I'm going to put those bean plates away. I gave them another coat, so they're good to go. Um, and then we need to start washing units here. That's what i got to have you do today for now. So I've got one tore apart there that we took apart last week sitting on the table, but if you can get some of this wing done, that would be super helpful today. So, good? We can unhook the tractor and pull that ahead to close the doors, but it's supposed to be 70 degrees here today, so um, we can just leave it open. It'll be okay. All right, I have a crop insurance meeting. That's what we're going to now. So I'll tell you, we're going to talk about crop insurance when I'm done here. All right, crop insurance meeting is done. Brock's doing his most favoriteest job, washing corn planter meter parts. 
He hates me right now. It's okay. He'll get over it. Um, I'm trying to figure out what my next step is. So I have a, a uh, delivery truck coming here to the farm any minute. Uh, they called me during the meeting and said it'd be here in a half an hour, and that was a half an hour ago. So I'm kind of waiting for that. We need to take our seed treatment chemicals that are over there down to the seed warehouse, which means these have to move. So I think these can go in the shed in the back. I was worried about them freezing, but I don't see anything on any of them that says do not freeze. So plus it's 70 degrees today, and they're unlikely to freeze anytime soon. Anyway, so I think we're okay. Um, I got more seed down there that needs to come down here, so I could bring the trailer down with some boxes of corn on it and then take that stuff back. That would be efficient. Uh, yeah, just trying to figure out what's, what's in order here. Okay, well, our delivery truck came. It's that box. We'll go through that in a minute. We're moving this uh, other stuff here out, uh, um, starter and fuller products that I've got from the Andersons. Just stick these in the barn out back. I didn't see anywhere on them that says don't freeze. So, and it, it shouldn't freeze, especially in the barn. But you never know. It is still the beginning of March. Okay. Well, we got all our other stuff out of there, and we got our first pallet of uh, seed treatment ready to go. Um, yeah, they were stacked. We're not carrying them down there stacked because uh, as bad as as bad as it is when boxes may or may not stay on the trailer, if this stuff spilled, whoo, -hoo, major disaster. Here is the delivery that we got. It's our new openers for the planter. So um, I bought these uh, wear parts openers. They're supposed to be much better quality than OEM or some of the other aftermarket ones. Uh, hardened zones on the outside. They've got a longer bevel to them. Um, more flexible around the hub. I did not get this, the cast hubs. I got the stamped steel ones, but they seem to be uh, thicker or better quality than the OEM anyway. I hear good things about these. So we're going we're gonna to try them and see how much longer they last. Uh, this set essentially lasted for two years. One for me and one for somebody else. Uh, I can tell you how many acres. 30, 300 acres, something like that I think is what's on them. I mean, that's not a ton of wear, but... They are worn down. I don't know. I think they'll they'll be good. We'll try them out. Brought the first pallet of seed treatment stuff down there. I really want to treat some beans today, so I'm going to do my best to make that happen. I don't know if we're going to get there or not. We've got to get stuff set up over here yet. Um, I have seven pieces of foam left to put up there, and then we're done-ish. But we're done, uh, which means the lift can go out. So I'm going to work on that. It won't take me real long. But uh, uh, then we can take the lift, put it outside so we've got some more room. Obviously, that cannot be in here while we're treating beans. There you go. That one was the last piece right there. Uh, I don't have anything in that edge, but we're going to worry about that later. That one's uh, it's narrower and it's kind of easier to put the rest of the stuff in there with, without that in the way. So, Okay, we are done with this lift. It's going to go outside. We're going to clean off our platform and tools and stuff here and uh, get this out of the way. All right, we got the boom lift taken outside, and we're getting our treater set up. So I pulled it away from the wall a little bit just to give me a little more room behind it there. Uh, we're going to do things a little bit different this year than we have done in the past. I'll go through it eventually, but essentially I need a box that's going to sit on the treater all the time. And so we're getting that box put up here right now. Okay, so we got a box up there. So we're going to dump the full boxes into the top of this one and then take the box that we dumped them out of and set it down there so that they get treated back into the same box that they're in right now. And we don't have to worry about switching them later. Um, so that should work good. So I got this one up there. I went through and looked underneath here, made sure that the little seal that's around the hole there is all up where it's supposed to be. So hopefully we don't have beans spilling out. Um, sometimes that can happen if the seal gets uh, uh, caught under the forks or the boards underneath the box or something. So that is good. We got it in place. Uh, I want to change our uh, pump tubes. So these two rubber hose hoses that are right here on this, um, they're, they're a peristolic pump or basically a squeeze pump. And these hoses can get deformed and worn out. I try and have new ones at the start of every year. And so I have a couple of new ones. We need to get them installed in there. 
Okay, I got those hose changed. We got our pallet of chemical put into place there. Um, a new pan, cleaned out the uh, atomizer a little bit more. It's, it was relatively clean, but we gotta clean up our table a little bit more, organize some of this stuff. This fridge moved out of the way. This is one of my customers that's gotta get delivered. Um, and then the big thing I have to do is figure out what we're gonna treat. The one guy that I had hoped to treat some stuff for today said he doesn't want anything until April, which I get it, I understand, but that's gonna be a problem or frustrate me a little bit. Uh, so we need to look through the list and see see what else, what other customers are deliverable that I can take stuff to, I'm allowed to take stuff to, and um, I've got enough seed to treat to make a trip or combine a couple to make a trip and what we need to do. So I have a feeling rather than doing a whole run of a variety, we're gonna end up doing batch jobs by customer, which it's not fun. It's more fun to do big runs, you know, where you do 15, 20 boxes of the same thing all at once instead of two or three, but we'll do them how we have to do them. We're gonna need to improve our system. Anyway, um, I've gotten four boxes confirmed of what I can treat them with. So that's a start, we can do something today. All right, Brock and I went and got some lunch, and we've been going through the orders here, calling some people and making sure we've got a plan. Brock's tired of washing row units. I tried getting him to do two more, because then he'd be halfway done. But I got, got 10 of them done, be happy. <laughs> he got 10 of them done, so we're good for today. We're gonna head down and treat some beans. I've got a list, I've got quite a list now, of beans that can be treated that will be delivered within the next two weeks. This is what I'm afraid of happening, is where uh, we treat a bunch of beans, and then they have to sit there for a month and I have to work around them and not be able to deliver them. So that's why I wanna make sure that we're um, treating stuff that guys are willing to take and we can get it delivered here relatively soon because we need the room. We gotta get stuff out of there. So that's the plan, let's go get some treated. Oh yeah, we also just got a seed delivery. These four boxes just came. These are mine for my customers, not warehouse customers. Uh, so I'm gonna have Brock go stash them against my pile, which is clear over on the far, against the far wall, we're gonna put them over there where we've got some room. So, all right, we need to, I, I've got a list of customers that are willing to take stuff. I need to look at the varieties a little bit and see which um, which variety we wanna to treat today. I know the 2922s, we've got a whole lot of those that could be done. All right, so here's the board and we are uh, starting to get some seed around. We're getting this stuff set up. I'm working on the computer here. We got our hoses attached. We spilled some water on the floor, so it's just like treating season. Better water than treatment. Um, I need these four boxes that are right here and I wanna do those first. I'm also gonna need these two, so there's only really five other boxes in the way to be able to get to those. So Brock's gonna start digging seed out um, and we're gonna set some stuff in here that's gonna get treated. It's gonna be a little tight here until we start moving some of this stuff. That's why I was really hoping to move a whole bunch of those, but none of these customers are, have any of those, which is fine. If we can if we can move stuff over when we get a fair bit of it pulled out of here, we will. But anyway, so Brock's gonna start digging some seed out of the way, or out so that we can start treating. We have, uh, I think it was 33 boxes um, that I can treat and deliver within the next two weeks, known that I can do probably be more than that but we're gonna see what we can get done here today if we can do a run or two and then we can treat some more tomorrow uh, we'll be good so we're kind of clearing the old records off of the computer here on the treater we got to get the new stuff set up we've got to load the chemical profiles we've got to get some chemicals mixing over here um, we've got to do calibrations we've got to load the seed uh, profiles in there we got quite a bit to do before we're gonna be ready to actually start treating Okay, so let's start getting some chemical mixing here. Uh, so our chemical comes to us in these kegs. Uh, these three are new ones. This one is the one that we had a partial left over from last year. There's still quite a lot in there. Um, but we're gonna open a new one and start here. Chemically, they are identical. The difference is this one is the Golden Harvest Preferred Seed Treatment, Cruiser Max Apex. This is just Cruiser Max Apex. Only thing that changes is that this one is orange. This one is red. That's it. That's the only thing that's different. But because I'm doing these for a custom treat job and not for myself or one of my customers, um, we're gonna we're gonna use the orange stuff just to make them look better, prettier, whatever. It's fine. We're gonna use a lot of this stuff up anyway. Uh, in fact, we may burn through a keg just today and tomorrow. So 
Um, we'll just go ahead and get started. We've also got our Saltro down here. We'll talk about what all this stuff is for some other time because we're going to get lots of treating videos and we're going to need some content at some point. So we're not going to bother with that today. For now, what's important is that we need to get these caps off. I should put some gloves on. We need to get our pump attached. Uh, these are a closed system. They're um, not supposed to be any chemical that leaks out of them, and it's a recirculating uh, pump. And so we have a three-way valve on our pump where when we turn it the right way, it pulls it out of one hose and pumps it back in the keg through the other one to get everything stirred up and mixed up. That's what we need to happen right now. All right, so we got that hooked up. We're just going to we'll check our valve so the arrow shows that way and that way, which goes back. When you turn it this way, then it goes that way and that way. That's not what we want right now. Turn our pump on, and now that's going to agitate. So the reason that we used the red last year and not the orange was because the red was cheaper. This year they decided to make them the same price, and I would prefer the orange, but I'm not willing to pay more for orange over red. Um, that's, that's the only reason why we used red last year So, and why we're using orange this year. But anyway, Brock's getting a pile there. Uh, we're not treating those right now. Those are just in the way of getting to the ones that we want, which he's getting to next. These 2463s, that's where we're going to start. We've got four boxes of them to do with uh, the Golden Harvest Preferred Orange Seed Treatment. So we're getting ready to treat. It's warmer outside than inside. So we open the door, we'll get a little air moving, plus I get better internet reception. Um, I have this third pump stand over here that I use strictly for water, mostly strictly for water. Um, the reason being is because it is not a smart pump stand or an automatic pump stand that is connected to this board and controlled the, the rates, uh, the, the, the speed of the pump is controlled like these will automatically adjust for seed size. So one of the things we have to enter into here is our variety, uh, lot number, seed size, and it will automatically adjust because we treat by milligrams of active ingredient per seed or fluid ounces per 140,000 seeds per seed count unit. Those are all the same terminology. Um, where a seed size like these 2463s that we're about ready to treat here, these are really large beans, right? This box is fairly full. We are 2,350 seeds per pound. Those are fairly large. There are some other ones out here, like some of the ones we're going to treat a little bit later. Let's see if I can find one real quick. Uh, 2922s right here. These are 29.73, so they're smaller beans. It takes more of them to make up a pound. Here, this one is 31.16, same thing. And so most farmers today are planting their beans by seeds per acre, not pounds per acre, seeds per acre. And they have a, a formula to figure out if they're using a drill, how many seeds per pound and how many pounds they need to seed per acre to get to the right number. Or if they're using a planter like we are, they're singulating out the seeds and planting them that way. We want the same amount of treatment per seed, not per pound. And so when you have really big beans like this, it takes a little bit more water per pound or per hundred weight uh, than if they're smaller beans. But what's more important is that the chemical rate is adjusted accurately. And so we use that, this pump that adjusts automatically and calculates it all by itself uh, for our important things like the base chemical, the Cruiser Max Apex, like the Saltro, like inoculant when we're using inoculant, which we're not today. Um, but that's what will go into these pumps. Water over here is just a carrier. It's just a filler to take up some space to make sure that the beans are coated well and the coverage is good. We want to be accurate. Don't get me wrong. We want to be accurate. But it doesn't matter if I put in, for example, on this run, we need 1.62 fluid ounces per 140K. It doesn't really matter if that is 1.3, 1.6, or 2 ounces per 100 weight. The beans are going to come out fine. And so we don't have to be as accurate with it. So this is a manual pump stand where I have to turn this little adjustment knob to calibrate it. Uh, so I think it said 21 point something fluid ounces right there on the bottom of that graph, right Brock? Water right at the bottom, slurry rate in the gray. 21.69. And so what we have here is a calibration tube that makes this process a little bit easier. Essentially we are gonna make sure our valves are right. We're gonna pull from our mixed tank. We are gonna treat two Calibrate, mix tank to calibrate. So that's going to pump that water through this pump 
um, down into here and then we're gonna time it. When it gets to the zero mark, we're gonna start a timer and we're gonna see how long it takes to get up to 21.69 or whatever. We want it to take a minute. If it's close, great. If it's not, we'll adjust our knob and try it again. So we are going here. You'll see this is a 42.7. That's not eight ounces per minute rate. That's a percentage of pump capacity rate. It goes from zero to 100. Uh, yeah, so we're up to 10. We had a little debris in the lines that we're flushing out, which is, is good. This will we'll suck out of this to go back through the pump and there's a filter. So it's actually a good thing that we're going out of this cow tube and not right into the treater and clogging up nozzles and stuff. 37 seconds. We're gonna be a little heavy, but not horrible. We'll see how much heavy and then we can adjust based on that. Okay, so we ended up with 26 ounces in a minute instead of 21.6, so that's a little heavy, not high. We'll just adjust our knob down a little bit. So we'll turn this back on. We're at, uh, let it get up to speed. We're at 42, I don't know, how far down should we go? Like 35? We'll go to 36. Okay. Uh, let's go to the mix tank. See, we can do this exactly the opposite way here, where now, instead of going back into here, it's going to go into the mix tank. We're going to draw from the calibration tube. So, Brock, when we get down to 30, start your timer, and we'll see what it's down to when we uh, get to a minute. So we should be down to, what, nine, eight. Roughly between eight and nine. Well, we still pumped too much that time, so we turned it all the way down to 30. And we're gonna try this one more time. Hopefully we're close enough here. We're probably close enough as we are, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll do our best. We'll try and get it right. Gonna be close, so I'm just turning the switch to off when it gets to a minute. Rock your phone's all scratched up. It's just a screen record. 59 a minute. Look at that. 21. I'm a half a percent too low. Close enough. We can adjust based on what the beans look like once we actually start treating. So now we're going to change our handles. We're still going to draw from our mixed tank. And we want to go to process instead of calibrate mixed tank there. Now we're going to turn this on hand and it's gonna turn our pump on and we're gonna watch it pump liquid all through this hose all the way up to our mix valve up here. Oh, we should probably open this handle. And um, once we get water to right here, we will shut that off because then we need to prime our uh, apex hose as well. And then we can combine them to get up to the atomizer. All right, so we've got two and a half gallons of our Apex in there. Oh, Mars preferred, sorry. We'll turn on the agitation just for now. Um, I even put on my fancy gloves. Thanks to Reed, my Syngenta Seed Care guy, for this fancy glove holder. And these are some serious rubber gloves. These are not your cheap, old, medical grade gloves. These are nice ones. Uh, anyway. Okay, we need to calibrate that pump and we need to then prime it. So that's where we're gonna start. We're gonna need a pitcher. How much, well, this will tell me over here. That'll tell me what we should have. Yeah, he can't do it because he doesn't know the information. We need to get this computer set up. We're gonna hit start setup and um, get our information put in. Okay, so we're calibrating different than this pump. This is done through the computer. And uh, basically, it's going to pump what it thinks it needs to uh, in order to get to the right amount per minute for our... No, no, it's got to be upside down, Brock. Well, just leave it in there. Okay. Um, so we're going to run it for a minute. Runtime, 60 seconds. It should pump. 26.2 ounces per minute. That's our target. So Brock has got a picture over there and we are going to change our valves. Um, so we need this to be process calibrate. We need this to be calibrate. We've got our valve open on the bottom. 
water. We just spilled water. Ryland's out here. That's Enogen corn. It's for feeding cows. It's red, so you know what it is. It's oh, pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. That's what the purple uh, wrapped corn is. It does that. Well, no, but the, the grain that it produces will be red. Anyway, uh, Brock, hold that in there until we get flow through it. Did I what? Is it is it clamped? I think it's clamped. The first one? Yeah, okay. So we're gonna hit this jog button. And it's gonna start pumping chemical until we see it come out that hose, and then we know we've got everything primed, and then we can start our test. All right, so we've got uh, our first pump run. It says that it has 25.88 ounces in there. What do we got, Brock? 27. 27? Okay, so then we need to adjust. Yeah, that line, the big line there is 28. So we are right at 27, maybe 26.8. So we're gonna come and put that into our uh, display over here and it will automatically update the ratio. So, um, pump totalizer is 25.88. Calibration tube total was 26.9. Nope, 26.9 we're gonna say. Okay, and we're gonna update the ratio. So that changed that to 1.1, and we run the test again. Brock's emptying it back into our uh, mix tank, and we'll try again. Okay, we got our pump calibrated. We're all good to go there. I, I have primed it until it started coming up into this hose. So now we're gonna hat. I got, um, I've got everything open. Put that to auto. Our valves are right there. Our valves are right on the other one. Our valves are open down here. So now we're gonna hit prime to atomizer. You're gonna see it go through this hose and we'll actually hear it. Turn this off. We'll actually hear it spinning through there and then we'll get some dripping out the bottom. Uh, I always do that on the first one to get a little bit extra, make sure that we are primed and ready to go. That way we have no untreated beans coming out to start with. Cause sometimes it takes a bushel or so for the, the chemical to get flowing and you end up with some untreated ones and we do not want that to happen here. That atomizer never used to be that loud, but I just greased it. Everything's okay. We just might want to have a bearing on hand. Okay. I'm sure we're going to get some dripping out. There it comes right now. I put that bowl there to catch it so we can run it back through. But uh, we should be good to go and ready to dump some seed in up here. So the, the difference from what we've done in years past to this year is the box sitting up there. I have this uh, fancy little box treater thing or uh, opener thing here. We're going to open our box, collect the tag, stick this. How's this work? Yep, over here. Stick that in there. Hook this on there. Brock is going to lift that box up, and then I'm going to push the button. The button. What's up, bud? Yo, your, your, your handlebars are crooked. Yeah, bring it over here out of the way. Okay, box is up there. Let her down a little bit, Brock. Or yeah. Okay, we should be good to go. See, now that is cool. Excellent. We'll let this empty. Okay, give her a little shake. Close it. Cool. All right, he's going to take that box and set it under our auger. Okay, double check everything. But I think we are good. I think we are ready to go. We've got chemical, we've calibrated that, we've calibrated this, we've got water, we've got all the valves in the right spot, we are primed to our atomizer, we've got the seed variety in there loaded, we've got seed in our box, we've got another box ready to take it. I think it's time to push the button, guys. 
it might take it a second to get everything dialed in perfectly but this treater is very accurate there's a reason that i really like using it so i'll be back when we get everything running comfortably they are orange and they're beautiful coverage is awesome our water rate looks fantastic i am thrilled here this is excellent our rates are all dialed in, everything is green. You'll notice this one is red, but it is off. We aren't using the second pump on here for anything, so we don't care about that. Our cruiser max rate is, uh, or our apex rate is green, it's good. Our actuator is green, everything is good. Everything is good. Fantastic. So you can see the box weight, that's how much is left up here. It uses loss in weight. So we have four scale sensors each corner and it senses how fast the beans are flowing out of that box and it will adjust this loss in weight actuator in order to make that as close to 800 pounds per minute as possible because our pumps are putting out chemical for 800 pounds a minute. And so the more accurate that that is or the closer to 800 that that flow rate stays, the more accurate our chemical application is. It looks almost perfect. For box number one out of the gate for the year, that's really good. There is box one when it runs empty like this. We just uh, come over here and we hit pause. And that shuts our auger down and our chemical flow stops when it senses that it's out of seed. So that's already off. Uh, we move this box out of the way and we get the next one and away we go. Yeah, this is where two forklifts is going to come in handy because we could have the next box already up there dumping while we're moving this one out of the way. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. We're going to be efficient here. Let's go. All right, so we dump the next box. Number two, we turn the, turn the treater on and it uh, should come out orange beans right away. They don't look real orange, but they're oranger than, um, than the red stuff is, I guess. At some point I'll show you a sample of them side by side. There we go, sweet. Okay, this is the last box of this variety for now. Uh, and so we need to uh, clean out before we switch varieties, especially between the next two varieties, because these are an enlist bean, E3. The next one we're going to do are extend flex, so they cannot get mixed. Not that we want to mix them ever anyway, but especially here. So we'll let the auger run a little extra long until nothing's coming out of it. And then we're going to come over here. We're going to move our little bowl that collected all the liquid. And then we are going to open this door let all the beans drain out the bottom. Hit the shutdown button for me, Brock. We're going to hit shutdown. It's going to let the auger run for 15 seconds and then shut it down. And uh, the beans are going to just keep coming out the bottom. As they roll around in there, they dry. And then they come down more and more and more. Eventually, that pan will be almost full. Um, once it shuts off, some more will run out. Then we'll just kind of turn the on, auger on and off, on and off, on and off, bump it until they all come out of there. So now it's just free fall or free Wheel and coast into a stop. There you go. And then we'll just keep kind of bumping it as they fall out of there. Well, we've bumped it a few times. I don't hear any beans rattling and nothing's coming out. So I think we've got them all. These are a bigger bean than uh, a lot of them. So I think they, they don't hang up in the auger as well. They just either keep moving up or they roll back because they're heavier. So... So that is good. We're going to take that pan, dump it back in the first box, because in my mind, they came out of the first box, right? That's the one that didn't clean, the, you know, they would have, yeah. It makes sense to me. Um, I'll get it back. And uh, then we're on to another variety. Excellent. Run one, done. Come over here and take a look at these beans as they're drying. Coverage looks pretty darn good. A touch splotchy. I don't know why some of these the quality of these beans isn't the best that I've ever seen. Some shriveled ones, but that sometimes happens. You can see that how they kind of bridge up just a little bit as we dig them out. Uh, that's because they're still drying and they're wet. Once they get broken apart, uh, we won't have any more issues with that. That's why I typically like to dump them back from one box into another one or back into the one they came out of. But as long as they're going to set and as much as they're going to bounce down the road, I don't think it will be an issue. So these look good. Okay, we're on our third uh, batch of the day. The second one, there was only one box of them. 
And it's the only box I have in the whole warehouse, so it's not like I would have been able to do it with more if we would have waited. So that one is done. We have two boxes of this one that's also Extend Flex, going to the same customer as that other single box. Uh, and that's all we're going to do for today. That's a heck of a good day to get started treating. I am really happy with that um, for being small runs and stuff. The beans look great. I'm happy with the way everything is working. We've only had one minor incident where a... Um, well, these boxes all have this latch. And it turns out if you don't open that latch and you put my box opener on there and open it, well, it breaks the latch. That's what happens. So we had to steal one off of one of my boxes and swap it out, but it's okay. We'll be all right. That's minor detail. All right. Well, we got seven boxes done. <laughs> it's, it's a good start. We have a long ways to go. And by long ways, I mean a long, long ways. Um, but these are good to have done. Ah, those beans look nice. So we're going to leave these uh, just to air out here, leave the lids off. They're pretty well dry at this point, but uh, once you put the lids on, then the moisture can't get out, right? And we need them to dry. And so uh, I have no reason that I need to move them right now. So we're just going to leave them set. We're going to put the lids on first thing in the morning. And then tomorrow, I'm going to have a big day treating beans. Uh, we have three more varieties to do, but where we had a four, a two, and a one here, tomorrow we have a six, a seven, and a 13. Uh, and so we're going to do a bunch and uh, and then Wednesday, we're going to deliver a bunch of the ones that we're going to treat tomorrow. Most of the ones that we're going to treat tomorrow. So, and uh, yeah, a bunch of them. Um, but yeah, that's, that's awesome. So I'm going to go back down to the farm and we're going to see what we can find to do down there for a little while. It's 437, so, you know, not too long. If we want to uh, turn our heat back on, we need to unhook this. So Brock's in the tractor. We're just going to set it down. I got the hoses and electrical connectors. Okay, I'll do it, Brock. He doesn't know how the three-point works. All right. That's good. Ready to do some more washing, Brock? <laughs> two more, come on, man, two more, and you'll be halfway. I could do them. I don't want to do them either, but I could. Okay. Um, so we've got to take all these gauge wheels off and do our openers, right? Uh, we've got those new openers over there. The problem is I have some stuff coming to put on here that I'm not sure if they have to go on, if, you have to, if the openers have to come off in order to put them on. And that's really all I can say about it. What are we calling this, Brock? Project Greenfields. Project Greenfields, yeah, Project Greenfields. Uh, I'll tell you guys what I can when I can, but essentially I have some, some test stuff coming that I'm not going to be allowed to show you. Um, but it's going to solve my in -row, in, in -row fertilizer issues. Uh, problem is I don't know when I'm going to get the parts or how exactly they install and what has to come off. I think some of them bolt up underneath where the closing wheel bracket goes, up under here, and that can all be left on there. But the other ones, there's two different products that we're going to test. And the other one might have to go on um, where the openers have to come off. So, I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to have to send an email and try and get some more information out of that one. Well, Rylan and I are going to go for a gator ride. Because it's super nice out today, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And he left her tractor in the middle of the road again. We're gonna fuel up, fill up the fuel just because I don't know if we really need it, but we'll see. It is um, it is dry for the first week of March. It is very dry. It's early enough. I am unwilling to plant anything at this point, but yeah, it's almost dry enough. We could. Dad's been uh, cleaning up the edge of our uh, woods here again. More. What he does. Just taking a look, seeing what things look like here. Some sticks. We're gonna ride, I think he's over there somewhere today. We're gonna go see. Yeah, he's over here, cleaning up the fence rope, burning up some brush, starting a big fire. This will be nice to get rid of it. Check out our new farm. Uh, we 
bought this farm last fall. I told you guys about it way back then, but uh, we haven't really been able to do anything to it yet. It had been wet and cold. Now's a nice day. It's dry, so we're taking the gator over. We're going to go drive around it a little bit. Check it out. I'll show you guys. the corner here so we're about four miles or so from uh, the farm not terribly far we're just a half a mile down the road from one of our other farms down that way and uh, this is it this is the new farm that we bought so it's all of this wheat stubble here technically this wheat volunteer wheat that's growing out here is a cover crop and we are not allowed to do anything to it until uh, March 15th so we technically don't take possession of this farm until the 15th of March here um, I mean, I can drive around it, but we can't really do anything. We couldn't do any tillage or anything like that until um, a couple weeks from now. So uh, we're just going to drive around, take a look, see what everything looks like. We definitely have got a lot of volunteer wheat to deal with. So it's going to need a heavy dose of Roundup. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge here this spring. The intention is to put corn in here. Obviously, it's wheat stubble. He did have double crop beans on part of it. But uh, we're gonna try and plant corn here. Comes up to, there's a little driveway in this corner. We're definitely gonna need to do something about a driveway because that's not gonna cut it. Uh, we've got an old corner post there, so that's good. Although I don't know if this line and that corner post are straight. All right, not that field, we don't get that one. Line's here. There's uh, three different spots where there's some piles of something. Here. Some, there used to be a fence row. I don't know if they just piled stumps. There's a fence post. There's oh, yeah, a lot of a metal fence. there. That's a problem. So Dad has intentions of coming down here with the backhoe as soon as we can, cleaning these piles up, hauling this crap out, or doing something with it. Uh, but we want to straighten this line out so we don't have to um, take all that. You can help him? Yeah. Okay, that's a good idea. There is... A lot of water coming off the neighbors here. And you can see we've got kind of a, a little bit of a wash or a draw that runs across the field. Now this doesn't have a ton of elevation change, but there is a lot coming off of the neighbors. So I don't know if we need to put a dike in here or a standpipe or something to kind of hold that water up so it doesn't form a gully and wash. I'd like to avoid a waterway if possible so we don't have to farm around it, but if we have to have one, we will. Uh, this farm has very little tile in it, so it'll probably get totally retiled once uh, uh, we uh, get, to get our own wheat crop in here and we have time to do it in the late summer. But here's another little spot where, yeah, just a wash. We're just going to have to put something in to stop the water. Control the surface water, more or less. Um, you know, the guy that, that farmed it, rented it, he didn't own the farm. It's hard to put a lot of effort into fixing up a farm that you don't own. He had done a pretty good job <coughs> with everything as it was. Um, but there's always room for some improvement. So that's what we're gonna do. Here's another pile with, looks like some posts. We got some fence posts. Yeah, stuff that pops tires. Rocks, lots of rocks. We'll get her cleaned up. One more pile here. So there's about three of them that need to be cleaned up and uh, just gotten rid of. And that one's on the top of a ridge. There's no reason for it to be there. And there's a bunch in this corner down here. This property line obviously is fairly straightforward and easy to figure out. I don't know if there is a corner post down here like there is in the road. We'll come, come take a look in here. Looks like we've got yeah, a bunch of rocks and some stuff to burn. Cool. Yeah, looks like we got a rock pile. Let's see if there's a post around here. Uh, the, the guy that farms this side is the same guy that uh, was farming the piece that we bought, so I don't see a corner post anywhere, but eventually that clump of trees might come out if it is on our side, which I think it is at least north-south. I don't know about east-west, so we get along with the guy over here on this side just fine. We shouldn't have any issues if he wants to we want to fix stuff up you should, shouldn't have any problem with it we do need to talk to him and figure out where exactly the property line is this way i mean it's got to be somewhere in line with these trees and the ones across the road i would assume but he kind of farmed it straight through so there's not a defined boundary in here and uh 
once we get some GPS stuff on the Gator, which I don't have yet, we need to come over here and make a boundary map, figure out exactly what we've got for tillable acres. There was 42 point something on the farm, but obviously we've got some road frontage and stuff that's not tillable. Uh, outside of that, most of it is, but I expect it to be around 40 acres of uh, tillable ground here. So nice long rows, half mile long, skinny 40. It's, it's a nice farm. It should be pretty good, especially once we get some tile in it. So. There's a post across the road. The line's got to be somewhere, somewhere right in front of us here. For our purposes, a nice driveway off of the main road here would be awfully nice. There's a good spot right here. The wires are high enough. We can get under it, get semi trucks in off the road on this end. I think that's probably what our plan will be. Somebody lose a hubcap? GMC. It's by that electric pole. Appears we've got some kind of tile blow out there. I don't think there's much tile out here, but there's a little bit. This is an Ohio field, which means the electric poles are along the road, not out in the field. That's nice. Michigan, they're in the field. Just came and sit kind of right in the middle of it here, and uh, I think this is going to be a really good farm for us. You can see, I don't know if you guys can see, but it really drops off. We're kind of at the high point. There's a lot of low ground down there. That's typically the really good dirt. As long as you can get the water off of it and keep it from washing across it, like that is the, that is the productive ground. And a half of this farm, or a third of it at least, is that really nice low ground. It's got draws up this side and it kind of has a general slope across towards the road. Like I really think once we get some tile out here, um, this is going to be a really good farm for us. It all lays really nice. There's no super high uh, clay knobs that are, you know, the crappy stuff. And so I'm looking forward to this one. I think it was a good purchase. Letting Ryland drive us back now that we're off the road. We got a whole flock of turkeys running over there towards the woods. Probably 15, 20 of them between the two different groups. I don't know if you guys can see them. Blend into the trees. There's some the other ones are right along the end of the road. There they are. Yeah. All right. Well, we had a good day. We got a lot done. Covered a lot of ground. Got to see the new farm. So cool. I'm sure this video was plenty long. I did not get to cover the crop insurance side of stuff that I wanted to. We're going to save that for later this week because I have a couple of days that I won't be able to make a video. Um, so just for reference or information, tomorrow we're going to treat beans. We're going to treat a lot of beans. That's the plan. Um, it's supposed to be stormy and rainy, so uh, we'll see what the weather's like, but it doesn't matter. We can treat beans inside there. Uh, Wednesday morning, we're going to make a couple of deliveries. I'm going to make at least one and hopefully have time to make a second one. If not, Brock will do it for me. Uh, but we've got uh, three different customers scheduled for deliveries for on Wednesday, and um, two of them will go on the same trailer load. Um, Wednesday afternoon, Dad and I are heading to Illinois for uh, Thursday. We have 360 Yield Center rain training. 360 rain training. So we bought this new irrigation system. Um, they're holding an event out there to teach us how to run it, how to maintain it, how to fix it, how to do whatever we need to do. And so we are going to uh, head out there for that, uh, which I'm pretty excited about, but it's uh, it's going to take the day and I probably won't be able to film it, but we'll see. Um, and then we'll be back on Friday. We'll see what's going on then. We've got uh, stuff to work on on the planner. Brock will be around. Maybe I can get him to film for me on Wednesday and Thursday. So we'll have something there. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching this one. Have a great night. Subscribe to the channel. Man, it's, it's so nice out. Oh, we should be planting beans soon. It's too early. It's too early, but we're getting close. I'd really like to get some more March beans planted this year. I just want it to be after the 10th or 15th of March, ideally. So we'll see what happens with the weather this week and the rain and stuff, but um, it's looking like a distinct possibility. So have a great night. Tell everybody bye. 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 See you guys.